to be able to work well with others, you must be a good communicator. And the most important aspect of communication is sincerity. So above everything else, I hope you see me as sincere. When people communicate honestly and openly, it sets a strong foundation for collaboration. I believe you're sincere too, otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? Investing time and money in something like this indicates a serious commitment. I'm here to convey a message, and to do that effectively, sincerity is key. You've got to be sincere. So let's both roll up our sleeves and dive into the work together. But here's something important to remember. Sincerity is not a test of truth. It's crucial to understand this point. Just because someone seems sincere doesn't simply make what they say true. We shouldn't think, oh, he must be right because he seems so sincere. That would be a mistake. Here's why. It's possible to be sincerely wrong. So we shouldn't confuse sincerity with truth. Sincerity is only a test of sincerity. Truth has to yet be tested by truth. However, I do hope you'll see me as both sincere and truthful. That's important to me. I've been really looking forward to being here today to share my story once again. I'm already thinking about the stories people might share after attending a class like this. Maybe next year, or even five years from now. Imagine if I meet some of you in the future and you tell me, remember that weekend in Orange County? That's when everything clicked for me. Something you said or maybe something someone else said finally made sense. And it changed everything for me. Wouldn't that be amazing? That's exactly why we're here today, to do this work. This morning I woke up feeling really excited about being here. I was eager to share what I have to say. Once a man asked me a question. He said, Mr. Rohn, I've been to your seminars many times over the last few years. Every time I see you, you're full of energy. Everything seems to be going well for you. How do you manage to stay so excited all the time? I replied to him, I think it's because I attend all these seminars. You should feel really enthusiastic about your own skills and what you can do. It's important to believe in yourself. So get excited about your own skills. Get excited about your own abilities. Now, if I can begin with nothing and end up standing here on this stage, sharing the best words I can, then you can definitely do it too. Sometimes it's not easy to express what you feel inside your heart or what you're thinking in your head. Words might not always come out smoothly when you try to explain yourself. But I've tried my best to do just that. And let me tell you, if I can find the right words to say, then you can too. And here's a key. Communicate. Don't leave it unsaid. If someone deserves praise or congratulations, make sure you tell them. Don't miss the chance to let them know. If a colleague has done something praiseworthy, make sure you acknowledge it. Don't hesitate to speak up. Try to find the best words you can to express yourself, even if it's difficult. It's okay to use words from others if you need to. I often borrow words from different sources because it's helpful. Here's why. If you struggle to make something clear for someone else, it helps to make it more clear for you. When one person listens and another person speaks, it creates a chance for both of them to change in a positive way. The listener might learn something new, something they've never realized before. And the person speaking also gets better at explaining things by struggling with their words. Sometimes it's hard to find the right words to express what you're thinking, especially when it's something deep from your heart or spirit. But the more you try to explain it clearly, the clearer it becomes for you. So when someone listens, they might be transformed by what they hear. And when someone speaks, they might be transformed by the effort of trying to make things clear. Firstly, it's important to have something good to say. That means having something that interests you. Something you're passionate about, something you understand well. Once you have something worth saying, then you can move on to the next step. The second thing is, say it well. And you've got to be able to translate it so it'll benefit someone. You should have a good way of presenting your ideas and knowledge. This includes being aware, understanding, and drawing from your own experiences. Learn to say it well. It's important to learn how to express yourself effectively. Here are a few tips on doing that well. Firstly, sincerity is key. The best conversations happen when both people are genuine. One person sincerely wants to learn or listen, while the other sincerely wants to share. When everyone is honest and open, communication flows smoothly. The second tip for speaking well is repetition. This means practicing what you want to say over and over again. Repetition is the mother of skill. 
just like learning any new skill. Becoming a good communicator takes time and repetition. The more you practice speaking, the better you'll become at expressing yourself clearly and confidently. Repetition means doing something over and over again until you get it right. It's like practicing a musical instrument or learning to ride a bike. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. The same goes for speaking well. The more you speak, the more comfortable you'll become with using words effectively. Now, why is repetition important in speaking well? Well, for one thing, it helps you become more familiar with the language. The more you hear and use words, the better you'll understand their meanings and how to use them in different contexts. Repetition also helps improve your fluency. Fluency means being able to speak smoothly and confidently without hesitating or stumbling over your words. By practicing speaking regularly, you'll become more fluent and natural in your communication. But repetition isn't just about saying the same thing over and over again. It's also about refining your skills and trying new things. You might practice different ways of expressing the same idea or experiment with using new words and phrases. This helps you expand your vocabulary and become more versatile in your communication. For example, in sales training, I often emphasize the importance of practice. Especially when you're just starting out and don't know much, practicing becomes even more crucial. Imagine you're in sales and your presentation isn't very good. You might find yourself wandering around saying something like, you wouldn't want to buy this, would you? Surprisingly, if you say that often enough during the day, someone might actually become interested and ask, well, maybe I would. What are you selling? But here's the thing. You can't just brush them off and say, it's none of your business. Once you've opened the door with your words, you've got to step through it and engage with them. And here's the best part. The more you practice, the better you'll get. You'll improve your sales pitch. You'll become better at listening to your potential customers and you'll become more skilled at closing deals. Ultimately, this means you'll be better at earning money. Practice is incredibly valuable in sales. Sure, making a sale is important because it brings in income. But what's even more valuable are the skills you gain through practice. Here's what's valuable in sales, the skills. The sale will make you a living. The skills will make you a fortune. Communication is all about connecting with people using words. Here's another tip for connecting with people through words. It's not just about what you know, it's mostly about how you make people feel. Think about a time when you had a good conversation with someone. Maybe it was a friend, a family member, or even a stranger. What made it enjoyable? Chances are, it was the way you were able to express yourself and understand each other using words. Words have the power to evoke emotions, inspire action, and bring people together. They can make us laugh, cry, think, and feel. So I'm encouraging you to focus on gaining knowledge. When you work with people, having some understanding of things like charts, ratios, and being able to assess both your performance and theirs can be really helpful. I teach a simple sales course. Let me give it to you in three points. The first step is to talk to many people every day. It might sound too easy, but in this simple sales course, it's the foundation. Especially if you're just starting out, sales can be a numbers game. But here's the exciting part. There are plenty of people out there. So don't stress about finding them. Just focus on talking to as many as you can each day. Even if you're not great at presenting your product or service, if you talk to enough people, something will happen. Even if your sales pitch is really poor, if you keep approaching people every day saying something like, would you be interested in buying something? Eventually, someone is bound to respond with curiosity, asking, well, what are you selling? When you talk to many people each day, a couple of things are likely to occur. Firstly, you're likely to make some sales. It might seem surprising, but sometimes people buy things for reasons you might not expect. For instance, some might buy out of sympathy for the salesperson. It might sound odd, but it happens. And why does it happen? It's all about numbers and ratios. Now, your sales pitch can be much better than just asking, would you want to buy something you can make it a bit more engaging? But if you're starting from scratch, it's okay to keep it simple. Someone might ask, where do I begin? Well, the truth is you can start anywhere. It doesn't really matter. The key is to understand the importance of numbers. You don't have to be exceptionally skilled or clever. You just need to grasp that numbers can make up for lack of skill to begin with.
If you're in a leadership role, your job is to help others improve their performance. For instance, you might say to someone, let's review your numbers again, Peter. How many calls did you make? Who did you speak to? So that's my approach to sales. It's straightforward and easy to follow. Firstly, it's important to talk to many people every day. When you do this, you're not only improving your skills, but you're also increasing your chances of connecting with someone who might be interested in what you have to offer. Secondly, it's crucial to be kind and pleasant. Remember, people tend to respond better when they're treated nicely. Your attitude and personality play a significant role in how people perceive your presentation. And finally, providing excellent service is key. This means going above and beyond what's expected. Take the time to do things that most people overlook, like writing thoughtful notes or going the extra mile for your customers. Offering exceptional service doesn't just result in a single sale. It often leads to repeat business and referrals. When you take good care of someone, they're more likely to introduce you to new opportunities and open doors that you may have never thought possible. It's really important to practice both your presentation skills and your ability to share what you know. Even when people say, no, thank you, they're still valuable because they give you the chance to practice. Especially when you're just starting out, it's a good idea to appreciate those who let you practice on them. Even if they're not interested in what you're offering. You might even consider compensating them for their time as you practice and stumble through your presentation. So don't underestimate the value of those who say no. Every opportunity to practice helps you improve your skills and skilled labor is often more valuable. If you can sell, you can earn a living. But if you can sell skillfully, you have the potential to earn a fortune. Similarly, if you can communicate effectively, you can keep a family together. But if you can communicate skillfully, you can inspire dreams and shape the future. The key difference lies in developing your skills. Imagine you have to cut down a tree. If you use a hammer, it's going to take you around 30 days to get the job done. But if you switch that hammer for an axe, you can finish the task in about 30 minutes. The big difference between 30 days and 30 minutes, it's the tool you use. And in communication, your best tool is your skill. So it's essential to practice to improve your communication skills. Saying things will involve several parts. First, there's sincerity, being genuine and honest. Then there's repetition. Practicing what you want to say until you're comfortable with it. Now let's talk about another aspect of effective communication. That's brevity. Sometimes you don't need to say a lot. You just need to say enough. Interestingly, the more you know, the better you can be at being brief. That's because you learn how to make your words more powerful and effective. In our busy world, being brief can be a powerful tool. Brevity means using fewer words to say what you want to say. It's like getting straight to the point without wasting time. Now, why is brevity important? When you're brief, you respect other people's time. You give them the information they need without making them wait or listen to a long explanation. And being brief helps you get your message across more clearly. You don't confuse people with unnecessary details. Imagine you're telling a story. Instead of rambling on and on, you focus on the key points. This makes your story more interesting and easier to follow. People are more likely to pay attention when you're brief. Brevity is also important in writing. Have you ever read a long email or text message and thought, get to the point? That's because long messages can be overwhelming. When you keep your writing brief, you make it easier for people to understand and respond. But being brief doesn't mean you have to leave out important information. It's about being concise while still conveying your message effectively. You choose your words carefully to make the biggest impact in the shortest amount of time. So how can you practice brevity? Start by being mindful of how you communicate. Before you speak or write, ask yourself, what's the most important thing I want to say? Then focus on that and leave out anything that's not necessary. Jesus was pretty brief when he was gathering his team. He'd just walk around and when he spotted someone he wanted on his team, he'd simply say, you follow me. That's really short and to the point. Now, why could Jesus be so brief and still get his message across effectively? Well, here's what I think. For all that he was that he didn't have to say. As he grew in stature, wisdom and strength, his reputation preceded him. So when he showed up, people already knew about him and what he stood for. When your reputation is solid, you don't need to do much talking. 
You don't have to give long speeches if people already know what you're about. Your reputation does a lot of the work for you even before you arrive. Remember, brevity is a skill that takes practice. But the more you practice, the better you'll get at saying more with fewer words. I encourage you to borrow words. Once Winston Churchill said, Truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it and ignorance may deride it, but in the end there it is. I really like that quote. It's so well said, much better than I could say it myself. You could think about it all night, and it still holds true. I encourage you to borrow words like these, whether they come from famous speeches, top ten lists, or even from your fellow colleagues who have shared their thoughts so eloquently. Borrowing their words can be really helpful. But then I want you to take it a step further. Start selecting the best words you can find or even create. We want you to become skilled at communicating. At touching people's lives with your words, at reaching their hearts, and helping them see things they've never seen before. So always aim for the best words possible. Don't miss out on the chance to challenge yourself to pick the right words. Take the time to search for them, even if it's difficult. Don't let anyone in your sphere of influence go without hearing your words. Your words have the power to work miracles. They can help people see things they've never seen before. There are still many people out there who haven't been reached. They might not see how they can become healthy or successful. But if you come along with your positive words, you can light up their path. You can show them possibilities they never knew existed. Why does choosing the right words matter? Well, consider it from this perspective. Imagine you're trying to explain something important to Peter. If you use vague or confusing language, he might not fully grasp what you're saying. But if you carefully select your words to be clear and precise, you increase the chances of getting your point across effectively. The process of choosing the right words can be seen as a challenge, an opportunity to push ourselves to communicate more effectively. It requires us to consider our audience, the context of the conversation, and the message we want to convey. It's about finding the perfect balance between being concise and being expressive. Words can work miracles. They can help people see things they never saw before. When you share your story, it can be like turning on a light for someone who was in the dark. They might say, before you came along, I couldn't see, but now I can. I see the possibilities. I see the opportunities. I see that if I grab onto this, I can change my life. It's like a revelation to them. So don't miss out on the chance to work miracles with your words. Get excited about the possibility of inspiring others with what you say. It's almost like having a godlike quality, being able to communicate in a way that uplifts and motivates others. Now, in closing, it would be useful to know more than one language. When I travel to different countries around the world, I often need translators. If I want to talk to someone in Japan, Israel, or Europe, I usually need someone who knows both their language and mind to help us communicate. People who can speak multiple languages are incredibly valuable because they can bridge the gap between different cultures and languages. So it's a smart idea to learn more than one language yourself. When I was a kid, my dad spoke German because he was German, but he never taught me. I could have learned it from him. My mom was English, but she only spoke French, and she didn't teach me that either. Back then, they thought it was best to focus on English because we were in America. But now we understand things differently. Looking back, I could have easily learned all three languages while growing up. If you think it's too late for you to learn another language, think again. This is an important point to remember. Consider passing this idea on to your children. Encourage them to explore and learn more than just one language, maybe even as many as they can. Kids are naturally curious and have the ability to learn. The only thing they lack is a teacher. So don't limit your child's potential. Don't let them only reach 10 or 15 percent of what they're capable of. Give them the chance to learn as much as they can to reach their fullest potential.